Hello, welcome to another video on our channel. Here we translate testimonies from people who have had near-death experiences and other spiritual experiences. Today we are going to know the story of David Thompson. He says he died and came back with the mission to warn about the future. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, subscribe now. Leave a comment with your name and city. Now let's listen to David's testimony. My name is David Thompson, but everyone calls me Davy. I was 31 when everything changed. My life was a routine of pretending. During the day I wore a mask of normality, worked, smiled at my colleagues and pretended that everything was fine. But at night, when the shadows became my only companion, I cried myself to sleep, crushed by the weight of depression. Since I was a teenager, depression was a constant presence, a shadow that followed me wherever I went. At 28, I tried to get rid of it once and for all with an overdose of pills. I was found in time, taken to the hospital and saved. I survived, but the will to live didn't return. With each passing day, the feeling of failure and hopelessness deepened, and I felt like I was just going through life, not really living. On the decisive night, I felt completely overwhelmed. He had been hoarding pills for months, determined to do it right this time. Sitting on the floor of my room, I looked around. The walls were covered in posters of rock bands I loved as a teenager, reminders of simpler times. The work table was cluttered, full of papers, books, and the bottle of whiskey I had bought for this occasion. I filled a glass with the amber liquid and, with one last look at the world around me, began swallowing the pills one by one, taking sips of the whiskey to help it come down. The bitter taste mixed with the alcohol, creating a numb feeling that was both comforting and terrifying. That's it then, I thought, as I felt my heart speed up. My body started to shake, and my vision became blurry. The last thing I remember was lying on the ground, waiting for the final darkness to envelop me. When I woke up, I was no longer in my room. Instead, I found myself in a vast, empty space, lit by a comforting white light. There were no walls, ceiling, or floor, just light and a sense of peace I had never experienced before. I felt light, as if all my worries and pain had been washed away. In front of me, a male figure emerged from the light. He seemed kind, almost fatherly. Davy, he said in a soft, compassionate voice. I'm Michael. I'm here to help you understand the importance of your life. I was confused, but I felt a strange calm. Michael showed me scenes from my life, moments that I had forgotten or that didn't seem to mean much at the time. I saw myself laughing with friends, comforting strangers, sharing moments of joy and sadness. Each scene was a reminder of human connection, of love and loss. These moments, Davy, are what make life worth living, Michael said. And there is more to come. There is a purpose to your existence, something you need to know. Michael extended his hand, and although I was hesitant, I felt compelled to follow him. We walked together through that ethereal space where light seemed to emanate from all sides, creating an environment that was both vast and intimate. Michael guided me to a large library. The seemingly endless shelves were filled with ancient parchments. Each scroll seemed to pulse with its own energy, as if it contained living stories. Each of these scrolls, Michael explained, contains a person's life. They reveal both the past and potential futures. I felt a mix of curiosity and apprehension. And what does this have to do with me? Michael smiled, a smile full of understanding and patience. You need to see what's coming. Only then will you understand the importance of your mission. He took out a specific scroll and with a gentle gesture handed it to me. My hands shook as I unrolled the parchment, feeling the ancient texture beneath my fingers. Images began to emerge, drawn with a clarity that was both beautiful and terrifying. I saw cities submerged in water, violent storms and people in despair. The date marked at the top of the parchment was clear. July 2024. What is that? My voice shook as I asked the question. It's a climate disaster that will occur if nothing is done to prevent it, Michael replied. The Earth is crying out for help, 
and you play a crucial role in saving many lives. I felt a lump form in my throat. But how? I'm just a person, a person who has failed so many times. Michael placed his hand on my shoulder, his touch comforting. Every life has a purpose, Davy. Your experiences, your struggles, they have all prepared you for this moment. You have the ability to make a difference, to inspire and lead. The message you carry is powerful. I looked at the parchment again. The images of destruction were hard to ignore. What if I fail? What if no one listens to me? You won't be alone, said Michael. You will have support, and your sincerity and passion will touch hearts. But it is essential that you believe in yourself and the importance of your message. Suddenly I felt a force pulling me back. Michael looked at me with compassion and said, Your journey is not over yet. Return and fulfill your purpose. I woke up in my room, still alive. The overdose hadn't taken my life. Instead, I felt a sense of peace and purpose that I had never felt before. Morning light streamed in through the window, and for the first time in a long time, the sunlight seemed to offer hope instead of indifference. I decided to seek help, starting with my childhood friend, Emma Carter. Emma was a psychologist and always supported me. With her, I started therapy, and little by little, with the help of John, her husband, and my best friend, I began to rebuild my life. I shared my experience with them, and together we decided that I needed to tell my story to the world. With the support of Emma, John, and my mother, Sophie, I began speaking publicly about my near-death experience and climate disaster outlook. Initially, people were skeptical, but my passion and sincerity began to touch hearts. I visited schools, communities, and used social media to spread the message. The response was overwhelming. People from all walks of life have started to come together to combat climate change and protect our planet. My life gained a new meaning. I found joy in small moments and a sense of purpose in helping others. The depression was still present, but I learned to deal with it, surrounded by love and support. Awakening transformed was an understatement. Every breath I took felt deeper, more meaningful. The sunlight, which once felt like a burden, now called me out of the darkness. I knew that my first task would be to seek help from someone who has always been by my side, Emma Carter. Emma was more than a childhood friend. She was my anchor. A psychologist by profession, she had a heart as big as her ability to listen. I called her, my voice still hoarse from the traumatic experience. Davy? The concern was evident in her voice. What happened? Where are you? Emma, I began trying to remain calm. I need help. Something... Something happened to me. Can we meet? Of course, she replied without hesitation. Come to my office. I'm here for you. In Emma's office, I sat on the familiar couch, where I had shared my struggles so many times before. But this time, there was a new urgency. I told her about the suicide attempt, the near-death experience, and the vision Michael showed me. Emma listened intently, her expression a mix of shock and empathy. Davy, she said softly, this is unbelievable, but it's also incredibly important. We need to find a way to share this with the world. Emma helped me structure my thoughts and message. We knew more support would be needed, so the next person I reached out to was John, Emma's husband and my best friend. John was a firefighter, a man of action and courage, always willing to help. We met at their home, a place that has always offered me comfort. John hugged me tightly, a gesture that said more than words could express. Emma told me what happened, he said, looking me in the eyes. Let's do this together, man. You're not alone. My mother, Sophie, was the last to know. Telling her was difficult as I always feared worrying her. But she deserved to know and her unconditional love gave me the strength I needed. My darling, she said with tears in her eyes, I always knew you were special. And now more than ever, I know you have a mission. We are all with you. With the support of Emma, John, and Sophie, I began speaking publicly about my experience. Our first stop was a local school, 
I was nervous, but Emma and John were by my side, giving me courage. The students were curious, and some were skeptical. I told them about my battle with depression, attempted suicide, and near-death experience. When I spoke about the climate disaster, the room fell silent. I know it sounds incredible, I said, but I'm here to share an important message. We have a chance to change our future. We need to act now together. The response was mixed at first, but my sincerity and passion for the cause began to touch hearts. The questions began to arise, and with each answer, I felt more confident. Over time, our message began to gain traction. We used social media to expand our reach, and soon, people from all walks of life began coming together to combat climate change and protect our planet. Environmental organizations, schools, and communities began to mobilize. My life gained a new meaning. Each small victory, each person touched by the message gave me a new sense of purpose. The depression was still present, but with the support of Emma, John, and my mother, I learned to deal with it. Through my journey, I have found joy in small moments and a renewed gratitude for life. The near-death experience was a new beginning, and the mission to raise awareness about climate disaster gave me a greater purpose. Despite the growing acceptance of the message, it has not been an easy journey. We face criticism and skepticism from many quarters. There were those who discredited my experience, calling it the delusion of a deranged mind. Others thought it was an attention tactic, a story made up to gain notoriety. During a community meeting at a local center, I was confronted by a group of skeptics. A man who appeared to be the group's spokesman stood up and challenged me. You expect us to believe this fantastic story? A vision of a climate disaster? It seems more like an attempt to gain fame than a real concern for the environment. I looked at him, feeling the pressure of every eye in the room. I understand your skepticism, I began trying to remain calm. And you have every right to doubt it. But I'm not here to gain fame. I'm here because I believe that if we don't act now, our future generations will pay the price. And I'm willing to do everything I can to avoid that. Emma always there to support me, intervened. Science has already been warning us about climate change and its devastating effects. What Davy saw could be confirmation of what we already know. The question is, will we ignore these warnings or act to protect our future? The tension in the room eased a little, and some people began to nod their heads in agreement. The man who had confronted me sat down, looking thoughtful. The meeting continued, and more people began sharing their own concerns and ideas for tackling the climate crisis. Over time, we began to form alliances with environmental groups and scientific organizations. We attended conferences and meetups, where my story served as a catalyst for broader discussions about the urgency of climate action. At one of these conferences, we met Dr. Rachel Morgan, a renowned climate scientist. She was one of the first to publicly support us, using her platform to amplify our message. Davy, she said during a press conference, your experience, while extraordinary, resonates deeply with the scientific data we have. We need to listen to these warnings coming from whatever source and act accordingly. Dr. Morgan has become a valuable ally, helping us navigate the complicated world of environmental policy. With your help, we gained access to legislators and community leaders presenting our proposals for immediate action. The journey also had a profound impact on my personal life. The relationship with my mother, Sophie, became even stronger. We spent more time together and she often accompanied me to local events offering her unconditional support. I'm so proud of you, Davy, she said one day as we walked through a park. You found a purpose and are helping so many people. I know your dad would be proud too. These words meant a lot to me. My father had passed away when I was a teenager, and his absence had always left a void. Knowing he would be proud gave me even more motivation to keep going. An important part of my recovery was coming to terms with my past. I met with people I had pushed away during my darkest moments, apologizing and seeking to reconnect. One of those people was Sarah, an old girlfriend I had deeply hurt during my struggle with depression. We met at a cafe and I was nervous. Sarah arrived punctually, her kind smile reassuring me. Hi, Davy, she said, sitting across from me. 
I was surprised when you came to me. How are you? Hi, Sarah, I replied, taking a deep breath. I'm better, much better, and I wanted to find you to apologize. I know I hurt you and there's no excuse for that. I was in a very dark place, but now I'm trying to make things right. She looked at me for a moment, evaluating my words. I always knew you had a good heart, Davy. I'm glad you're doing better. We all make mistakes, and it's important to learn from them. The conversation continued, and although we had no intention of resuming our relationship, it was an important step towards my healing. Reconciling with Sarah was a symbol of how I was beginning to heal old wounds and move forward with a new perspective. With the support of key allies and the power of social media, our campaign began to gain traction on a national level. We organized a series of lectures and events in several cities across the United States, expanding our message and engaging more people in the cause. On one of these trips, we went to New York for an international climate conference. The city was vibrant and bustling, a stark contrast to the tranquility of Portland. We were greeted by a crowd of journalists and activists eager to hear our message. At first, I didn't believe my story could make such a difference. I began my talk in the packed auditorium. But seeing the response from all of you, I realized that we are on this journey together. It's not just my experience that matters, but what we can all do together to change the future. Warmly applauded, I handed the floor over to Dr. Rachel Morgan, who presented alarming scientific data on the acceleration of climate change. We have clear evidence, she said and now we have a unique opportunity to act. Davy's story reminds us of the urgency and importance of each individual action. Despite growing support, we have encountered significant obstacles. There were attempts to discredit my story and disinformation campaigns on social media. Powerful groups, with interest in maintaining the status quo, began to attack us. One night, after a particularly exhausting talk, I sat with Emma and John at our hotel in New York. The tension in the air was palpable. Davy, said Emma with a worried expression, we can't let these attacks demotivate us. What we're doing is important and we need to keep fighting. John, ever the optimist, added, we will get through this together. They may try to bring us down, but truth and justice are on our side. Your words gave me strength. We decided to redouble our efforts, focusing on educating the public and combating misinformation. We created a series of explanatory videos and organized workshops to train local activists. Each new difficulty was faced with renewed determination. One of the most impactful moments of the campaign occurred during a visit to Washington, D.C. We managed to get an audience with a group of senators to discuss the need for stricter climate policies. Being in the nation's capital where crucial decisions were being made was an overwhelming experience. As we walked through the halls of the capital, my mind was filled with thoughts about the importance of the moment. We were about to talk to people who had the power to make significant changes. During the meeting, Dr. Morgan presented scientific data while I shared my personal experience. Gentlemen and ladies, I began, feeling the weight of each word. I am no scientist, but I have experienced something that has shown me the urgency of what is to come. We need your actions to avert the disaster I have glimpsed. The reaction was mixed. Some senators showed immediate support, while others remained skeptical. However, the seed was planted. We would continue to work tirelessly to ensure our voices were heard. Throughout the campaign, my personal journey continued as well. I began to explore my spirituality seeking to better understand the experience I had with Michael. This led me to attend a local spiritual center in Portland, where I met Pastor Jacob, a wise and understanding man. In a quiet conversation in his office, he listened patiently as I related my experience. Michael told me my life has a purpose, I explained, but I'm still trying to fully understand what that means. Pastor Jacob smiled, his gaze full of compassion. Davy, sometimes the purpose of our lives reveals itself little by little. What is clear is that you are on the right path. Your story is touching hearts and inspiring change. Continue to follow your heart, and the truth will become clearer. These words brought me inner peace. My faith, which was once a wavering flame, began to grow again. 
I found solace and strength in my spirituality, which helped me face challenges with a new perspective. Over time, I began to see tangible results from our efforts. More and more people were mobilizing, and environmental policies began to gain traction in several states. My story became a catalyst for greater change, and it filled me with a sense of purpose and fulfillment that I had never experienced before. At the same time, my personal life flourished. I repaired relationships, built new friendships, and even started dating again. I met Rachel, an environmental activist at one of the events we organized. His passion for the cause and his natural kindness were irresistible. I never thought I would meet someone who understands so deeply what I'm going through, he told her during a walk along the river. You brought new light into my life. She smiled, squeezing my hand. We're in this together, Davy, and together we can make a difference. My mission expanded beyond what I had ever imagined. We founded an organization dedicated to climate education and action, which has continued to grow. The work was hard but rewarding. Every small victory, Every person we touched reinforced my belief in the power of collective change. At an event celebrating our first year of founding, I looked at the gathered crowd. I saw faces of all ages united by a common cause. Emma, John, Rachel, my mother Sophie, and so many others who joined us along the way. It was a testament to the power of resilience, hope, and joint action. I took the microphone, feeling a deep emotion. This is just the beginning. I said, my voice firm. Together we will continue to fight for a better future. Each of us has a role to play, and it is our responsibility to ensure that future generations inherit a healthy and sustainable planet. Applauded warmly, I felt a wave of gratitude. My near-death experience brought me on this journey, and each challenge I overcame reinforced my commitment to the mission. I knew that as long as we continued to believe and work together, we could face any adversity. Today, as I reflect on everything that has happened, I feel deep gratitude. The near-death experience was a turning point, an awakening that transformed my life in unimaginable ways. Every struggle, every triumph, every meaningful connection I've made along the way has brought me here. I remember Michael's words that my life had a purpose. Now, I see that purpose unfold every day. My journey has taught me about the importance of resilience, love, and faith in something greater than ourselves. The road ahead is still full of challenges, but I am ready to face them with courage and determination. I know I'm not alone, and that makes all the difference. David Davy Thompson's story is living proof that even in the darkest circumstances, we can find light and purpose. And together, we can create a better future for everyone. As we move forward, our organization continues to grow and impact lives. Each new member brings a new perspective, a new strength to our cause. The message I started sharing turned into a global movement. Emma, John, Rachel, my mother Sophie and I continue to work tirelessly, each bringing our own skills and passions to the mission. Together, we are building a legacy of hope and action. And I, Davy Thompson, continue to tell my story. Reminding everyone that no matter the difficulties, there is always a path to the light. The journey never ends, and the mission to protect our planet and each other is more important than ever. So, what did you think of this incredible story? Leave your opinion in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Activate the notification bell to be notified with each new video. Let's bring more people the hope that there is life beyond what the eyes can see.